Um, yeah, actually, I was quite interested in films from when I was sort of in high school. Uh, and my friends and I would discuss a lot of whatever was coming. In those days, it was mostly stuff we saw on Doordarshan and, um, and the films we watched, all Bollywood stuff or some, some foreign films as well that used to come on Doordarshan. So I was sort of an avid film viewer. Um, but, you know, our family background was such that it was all engineers and so on. And um, so and I was very good academically. So it was, I was sort of, you know, it was assumed that I would follow in the same footsteps of my aunt and uncle and so on. Um, so I sort of signed up for IIT study circle in class 11. Uh, and after about six, seven months of that, and I was like, why am I, I mean, I, I don't even know what is engineering and why am I just doing this? And uh, so I opted out of that at that point. I said, I'm not taking this exam. I'm not going to, you know, just keep slogging for no reason. Uh, and then I had this thinky, I want to study film, but I mean, how do I do it? So then my sister was already studying abroad. And so I thought that might be an interesting way to try out films without sort of committing to it. <laughs> because there you can take so many different subjects at the same time. Um, and so once, uh, so I, I went to Harvard for my bachelor's because my sister sort of wanted me to study there and uh, help me through the, you know, application and stuff like that. So, so I was like, okay. Uh, so the first thing I checked out there was, okay, what's there in film and photography? And they actually turned out, it turned out that they had a really good department. And so I took photography in my first year there, which I absolutely loved. Um, and then a couple of years later, I took film, and that was non-fiction film because that is how they introduced, uh, you know, filmmaking to students. And it was totally different from my idea of what I had watched. And I was like, oh God, now I have to make documentaries. But TK, you know, at least you learn how to, you know, use the camera and the sound recorder and editing. And so it was sort of with that idea that I went to the course. And I was absolutely sure that I wanted to do fiction. I wanted to do, you know, relationships and emotion and that. You know, that was the kind of thing that appealed to me at that time. and um, So this was just sort of just a technical part or something. But somehow that experience was so liberating because we used to go in two people units like one, and that time it was like 16 mm film. And uh, so like with quite a heavy camera. And so one person with the camera and one person with the Nagra for sound recording. So there was two people unit and whatever you shot, you got to edit on the Steenbeck. So that was like an incredible experience. Like I think that whole semester, I, the whole year actually, it was a year long course. I only did sort of film and I ignored all my math courses, which I was sort of just doing, ki, achha, chalo, was, kuch lete, <laughs> you know. So, so that sort of changed my life in a way that I really, that I felt like, okay, this is something I really want to do. Like just holding the camera and that experience was just so powerful that I thought that, okay, maybe I can do this. So that was the sort of, from the time, uh, like when I was 15, I thought I wanted to be a filmmaker, but I had no idea what that meant. But this was sort of, uh, with the experience, I really felt like, uh, you know, this is something that I could possibly do. Um, but I still took my degree in applied math. Uh, uh, I guess I was playing it safe, but um, also because I love math. So I had no issues with that. And I was like, whatever it is, you know, I didn't want to study something that I uh, was doing to get a job or something. So at least math was something that I loved. So I could just, you know, do it. <laughs> so though I've done nothing much with the degree <laughs> since. So after I finished that, then uh, it was like, okay, now film school, this is what I want to do. So I applied to colleges in the US. And um, so I had got an acceptance from Temple, I think, Tem yeah, Temple University, you know, full scholarship, and I got my visa. And then I went for my FTI interview. Um, and I loved FTI so much, and I wanted so much to stay in India that against everyone's better judgment, <laughs> or the, well, they thought it was better judgment, I decided to sort of not go to the US and study at FTI. And I did direction there for well, three and a half years, including strikes. Um, so, well, that was sort of the way I got into films. See, in Doordarshan, what one saw was a lot of world cinema as well, and a lot of older films, like from the, in the Hindi films from, from, from the 40s and 50s and so on, which, um, in, in which the framing and um, the lighting, or there was a lot more thought given in those films. And so, like, before I was 10, I had watched a lot of Gurudat. You know, when I was in school, I had watched a lot of Satyajit Rai. So, and all that on television. Um, so, 
uh, so that exposure was there, but no, no non-fiction film, absolutely nothing. So most of my exposure was in the US, uh, and that was also a particular kind of films that they were showing there, like more French, American, and so on. Uh, and in FTI, the focus was totally fiction. So I think we probably saw like seven documentaries in three years. <laughs> so it was like, and the documentary project was the one thing that we could just, you know, just go through without thinking much. It was just before the diploma, and we would sort of just, sort of just do it just finish it and get on to the real thing kind of thing. So yeah, so documentary was nowhere in the picture, uh, even uh, in, in FTI. And uh, yeah, um, and so our ideas were so much about fiction. And uh, the, you know, I used to love Antonioni at that time, uh, Bresson, I still love Bresson. Um, I, I, but after FTI, it was like, okay, now what do you do? For you've done three years of film. You you are so uh, a director supposedly, and so you know you know do you write scripts? You know do you go to Bombay? What do you do? And uh, so I somehow felt like I wanted creative independence beyond anything. I didn't want to spend ten years assisting, you know, somebody ex pass out of FTI and just be running around and doing production or something. Uh, so that was one. And so I was like, okay. Then I wrote a proposal for PSBT soon after I finished FTI and, and somehow that got, got accepted and that was really important because I got to make my own film within you know a few months after passing out and so I just did one assisting job on a documentary before that and that was it and after that I could sort of then make films on my own and that was the thing that I really loved about documentary is the total independence that you have about thinking through things. I didn't want to be a manager of people like in fiction you have to more than anything you have to be able to manage everyone's egos and you know so I was like I don't, I, I don't think I have the skill to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't think that's what cinema is about. So for, for me that was sort of the reason why I love documentaries is because I could just do my own thing, make my own mistakes without 100 people watching it and judging me for it. You know, so, yeah. Well, there are, there are two ways filmmakers handle this thing about the, with the camera and with the, uh, so some people, what they do is that they spend a lot of time without the camera and then uh, they start shooting so that you're used to the person and then um, you take out the camera. Now, I, actually, I'm not like that. I prefer to be seen as a woman with the camera. So from the first time I go, I usually, like this time I did a recce in which I didn't take the camera actually, but usually I prefer to be shooting from the beginning because I don't want, the, otherwise there's sort of a, you know, a divide that this was the person and now suddenly she has a camera, you know. So again, you have to start over in a way. And then there's also a kind of feeling that now, uh, you know, your uh, interactions with the person Anupama was one thing but now this is like filmmaker has come interview her has come and so everybody sort of puts on that thing of being the interviewee or so on or the subject uh, so so I prefer actually to start always be filming something and always be shooting something so that it's so that I'm seen as uh, the camera seen as a part of me so that's sort of my approach so that's what I do yeah I um, I would always sort of, uh, and this is just talking for myself, is that I really enjoy doing the camera. Um, and for me, that is the basis of making the film. So it's very difficult for me to tell somebody else what I want. So it is through the doing and through the responding that I figure out what I want. So that is very clear to me. So if this is the technology that allows me to do it, then that's okay. But having said that, I love film. I love working with film. And I have done similar stuff working in 16mm. So I don't think that they, are, they necessarily have to be uh, mutually exclusive. So if there is a time when I can shoot on film, um, I think it brings a lot more rigor because it is expensive and you can't just shoot endlessly, um, you know. So, so I think you have to think more about what you're shooting. And when you hear, you know, when you're holding the camera and you can hear the film going and you know <laughs> that, that every, every foot is, uh, you know, precious. Uh, whereas here it's like camera on karke chhod do, you know. But 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 that has its own um, advantages because you can do some kind of work that you couldn't possibly have imagined doing in film. You know, going to some kind of spaces, shooting in some kind of lighting situations. You you know, working with smaller crews and all that is like you know gold for documentary because just having too many people, lights, you, you know, it's just too much of dhamjam and it just destroys the moment, uh, which for me is the most sort of um, the heart of the documentary. 
so I was actually really interested in this idea of loneliness, uh, more because of my time in the US, because it was a very, uh, it was a time when I, I was really sort of missing home and I didn't have friends for a long time. And it was, it was just that dealing with it every day, you know. Uh, and later, even in my work at FTI, almost all my um, student projects, the protagonist was a woman living alone. And so this was something that um, interested me. And I was like, okay, let's see how it is in the real world. And that was sort of the starting point for me to sort of um, explore that in the film. And I was also sort of finding my feet. Uh, so that was an interesting film and that somebody else had shot, Sudhir had shot the film. So it was also the time when I wasn't confident about doing my own camera. Uh, so that was a different experience. So I would, because in my time at, uh, in, in the US, I was doing my own camera and I really liked that. So this was sort of a thing in which I had to play director and I wasn't, I was still trying to figure out what that means in a documentary, you know? <laughs> so, so that was, um, um, yeah, and people, people um, um, for, I don't know whether you've seen the film, but yeah, um, they, they were actually, some, some, some of them are still my friends now. And um, yeah, they were really open and welcoming, in fact, actually. And um, yeah, and the surprising thing is not a lot has um, changed in terms of just the, the problems part, you know. Uh, though maybe more women are living alone, but yeah. But in terms of, uh, you know, having to lie to get a house or not being allowed, maybe it's even gotten worse. In, in more senses because everybody wants a good family, you know. So that notion has got even more rigid now, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was also something that uh, has uh, sort of the history of that is goes far earlier than that. My mother uh, has been, a, was a teaching in a school for many, many years. And she was really invested in that, and so uh, you know, she, you know, the students would be coming home. She would be carrying her notebooks, and she would be uh, doing so many other things other than just the teaching. You know, she had an astronomy club and an environment club, and so she was like super hyperactive, I would say, in the school, and very popular among students. She was teaching maths and science, uh, so sort of education was something like dinner table conversation for us. You know, so we would um, like. I, I like I was there with my mom more, so uh, so we would be talking about it all the time. That okay, today we tried this, and you know we are trying this with younger children to teach maths and so on. So this was sort of you know life. <laughs> so so it was something that interested me, and I was I always thought I would make children's films actually, even in fiction. So I don't I, I'm not sure about that now, but when I was younger. Uh, and one of my favorite films is Abbas Kurosawa's Where's My Friends? Where's the Friends Home? And that was again another turning point in my life, uh, which sort of really also, uh, I don't know, made me feel that um, like cinema is just can be so simple and yet so moving and powerful. And it was just like a one day story. And so I was extremely moved by that film. And I saw that um, in 94 in when I was in college. And I was like, oh my God. And at that time, I didn't even know that Iran made films. So uh, so I was like, who's this? And, and, the, and the, the hall was packed. You know, there were so many Iranian Americans there. And so I was like, Achha, you know, you know, because we have this whole notion that, you know, everything uh, in, in the West Asia, like it's like no culture, no something and something, you know, some weird notions one has. Right. So it was like, oh, you know, such an amazing filmmakers then. So on. And after that, I actually studied Persian because I uh, loved his work so much and I wrote to him in Persian and I met him and so on so that was like another thing so yeah so this thing about with uh, uh, wanting to work with children and education was something that was um, always there and it was uh, I think when I made I wonder in um, I think when was it 2008-9 um, I'd written the proposal I think in 2007 so so that was the first time where after all these years finally I did something around that like even in FTI I hadn't actually done anything around children so so that was very important for me to uh, an, an important culmination of all those years of sort of thinking and wanting to do something around that yeah in, in I wonder the focus was on the children only and I had sort of very carefully avoided teachers and well, and parents as well. So it was more the world of children and also looking at schooling from the outside, from more the point of view of uh, children who didn't like school. 
so who was so you're looking at school very suspiciously saying and all uh, my point of view was almost like you know we are trying to sell this thing called education especially to rural children saying this is going to make your life good and better but is that really right and are they really better off not going to school and just you know roaming <laughs> outside you know on the beach or you know among the hills and doing their own thing you know what are you really doing and so it was like it turned out actually after my the way it turned out was that it was sort of quite critical of the uh, the school itself uh and um being sort of a part time teacher myself and my mother being a teacher and i also know when i also had really good teachers and i was like i'm probably taking too uh, harsh a stand uh and too radical a stand um and, and that there are actually teachers who want to do something so i've always actually wanted to follow up with doing something around teachers so that was sort of the impetus for this film the starting point but it sort of uh, the way it happened there was that then i i'm always in, interested in the children as well so i didn't want to just focus on the adults so so then it became that whole sort of uh, the life of people there of the families of the children of you know the absent fathers and so all of that sort of uh, included themselves into the film so to speak because i uh, i was not convinced or i was not interested in only looking at teachers but though they were a very important part so in that sense yeah it was a follow up but i think i stand in a very different place vis-a-vis -vis schooling and this because i'm like it's easy for me to say or many of us who've had uh, you know education in the best universities and schools to say okay maybe it's better off to be literate but you know uh, you know we've also reached and we've also got this voice because of our education so and however faulty that may have been so it's also a little bit more pro school this one and more from the inside looking so in that sense it's quite different uh in most of the workshops that i've done is been uh, non fiction films so that itself is a new concept for people to sort of uh, get their head around because everybody wants to act you know and or you know write scenes or you know put music or something so it was sort of a uh, so for uh, so the workshops are more sort of uh, first trying to uh, engage children or uh, older you know younger pe younger people or uh, film students uh, to enjoy that moment of filming the filming reality so that that's sort of the fun part and they usually start enjoying it really soon because actually it is a lot of fun uh, and uh, and so i sort of i have done some fiction um, films in workshops as well but it's been mostly non fiction and i think because of the cameras of course it's become much easier one couldn't have imagined uh, doing these kind of things with film um maybe with still photography but i think very very difficult to do film workshops with on film so certainly the uh, the technology has played a huge role um yeah and uh, so in that sense um but what i do in my uh, workshops or wherever i teach is to uh, not uh, like i never go on the shoot with the uh, with even children when they go in groups so they go and do their own thing and come so at that moment of shooting they are in control so even if they're fighting or whatever they are doing <laughs> but then when we come back we sit together and see every shot that has been taken so so if somebody is just bummed around and say ah theek hai kuch leke aa jate hai so you know it shows and the whole class is watching and then you have to explain why you did it and what you were doing so it's like full freedom with full responsibility so that is something that i follow all the time uh, so that it's not like, so i don't want uh, somebody to be taught filmmaking in the sense of um, you know copying what i do or what i would have done in a situation and that has been the most amazing part because you know the children and uh, you know everybody comes up with their own amazing ways of doing something and then that helps them understand themselves uh, and that's sort of the process i followed in i wonder for myself because that was my sort of semi film school for documentary is that i sort of said okay i'm in this location i'm with the camera now what am i going to do i don't know and then sort of through the editing process to see what have i done you know so Uh, and then to make something out of that so it's it's that so it's that sort of joy of that uh, you know discovery that uh, i encourage in that uh, you know film uh, workshop